This is a handy lathe I just bought. Still get, digging into it, find out damages and condition. It's got plenty of wear. It's probably built somewhere between 1915, 1925, somewhere in that area. Granted, all all that time, it's bound to have a lot of wear. All that said, everything seems to work on it. At least all the major speeds, feeds. There's some peripheral damages that gotta get fixed. We got two steady rests, comes with a taper attachment. Four jaw chuck. That's, that's a 16 inch four jaw chuck. It's nearly touching the ways. And uh, distance between centers is about four feet. But we got it up and running. This is an early, an early gearhead model, where the uh, the motor was not built into the design of the machine. It, it did come from the factory with a motor. You can see it's got the the bosses for it, but the motor is up above the headstock, which is actually kind of nice because it makes the overall machine a lot skinnier, which is nice. On our shop, get us extra room. It's got a parking attachment for the truck there. It's probably not original, but it works. You see there's some damage on the taper attachment. Broken casting, so we'll have to find a way to fix or replace that. You see there's lots of wear and chips out of the ways. There's some pretty deep, deep scoring on the cross slide ways. It's probably not going to be super easy to get a lot of accurate work out of this machine, but it's still got lots of horsepower built into it. This thing ought to take a, some pretty heavy cuts. Uh, speaking of horsepower, the, the motor is a five horse. I don't know if that's the original motor, but it looks age, age appropriate. The pulleys are definitely not original, but they'll work. We'll make some guards to cover all that up and make some parts on this guy. It's temporarily wired in right now. I'll show you having it running. One nice feature I like about these Hendys is you got the uh, automatic speed change on them. Or, or feed, feed direct, automatic feed direction change. You don't have to shut the machine off to change the direction. It's this lever right here. Uh, this contraption right here, from what I can see, the, the drum switch was originally mounted down underneath the uh, the chip pan. In fact, you can even see here where they had the plumbing for the wiring and the motor there came all the way down and through the chip pan there. And then the drum switch had a sprocket on the face of it. And they had this apparatus set up so you could turn the machine on and off from the carriage. That, that seems to be a, a common feature on a lot of uh, really big uh, turning lathes. But for a lathe this size, it's, it seems to be a, a luxury piece. This thing's going to need a lot of work, 
but in the meantime, it's running. Our previous engine lay is this one here. And the Colchester Qua Clausing 15 by 48. It's been a really good lathe. This steady rest actually came with the Hendy, but it does not fit the Hendy. Our Clausing does not have a steady rest, however. So we're looking at the possibility of maybe modifying this one to fit the Clausing. But this is what, when it, when it comes to, for us, a bit, for what we would call a big lathe in our shop, this is what we've been using. That's what we're familiar with. And this is what we just got. That gear in the truck was the, the previous owner's last job. I just haven't taken it out yet. At one point, this machine was sold by Manning, Maxwell and Moore, Railway and Machinist Tools and Supplies. They're based out of New York. You know, with offices in Boston, Philadelphia, Chicago, Cleveland, and Chicago. No, oh, excuse me. Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. This machine was made in uh, Torrington, Connecticut. I've been interested to see how it got from Connecticut down to Texas. I doubt that I doubt that any part of the trip involved is uh, 18 wheeler semi. But this is our new toy. So that'd be a lot of fun.